Hi everyone. In the previous video, we have seen about the female pelvis and the fetal skull. In this video, we are going to discuss about the mechanism of labor. At the onset of labor, the most common presentation is the vertex and the most common position is either left occipito anterior or right occipito anterior, left occipito anterior or right occipito anterior. Now let us see the different positions as per in the cephalic presentation. If the occiput is pointing towards the left iliopectineal eminence, that position is left occipito anterior, left occipito anterior. If the denominator is pointing towards the right, that is if the occiput is pointing towards the right iliopectineal eminence, that position is right occipito anterior or ROA. If the occiput is pointing towards the symphysis pubis, the position is direct occipito anterior or DOA. If the occiput is pointing towards the right sacroiliac joint, the position is right occipito posterior or ROP, right occipito posterior. And if the occiput is pointing towards the sacral promontory, the position is direct occipito posterior or DOP. And if the occiput is pointing towards the left sacroiliac joint, the position is left occipito posterior or LOP. Already I have told you that the most common position is ROA or LOA that is right occipito anterior or left occipito anterior. So in this video we are going to see about the LOA. In this the lie of the baby is longitudinal see this is longitudinal presentation is cephalic position is left occipito anterior and the attitude is flexion that is the legs are flexed towards the body and the hands are also flexed and the head is flexed towards the neck this is the universal attitude attitude is flexion and the denominator is occiput occiput the presenting part is anterior part of the parietal bone, anterior part of the parietal bone. And we are going to see the left occipito anterior. First before dealing the mechanism, first let us see the definition of mechanism of labor. As the fetus descends, the soft tissues and bony structures exert pressure which force it to negotiate the birth canal through a series of passive movements and these movements are collectively known as mechanism of labor. As the fetus descends, the soft tissues and bony structures exert pressure which force it to negotiate the birth canal through a series of passive movements and these movements are collectively known as the mechanism of labor. There are three main principles for the mechanism of labor. In that first one is descent takes place throughout the labor that is throughout the labor the fetus will be coming downward descent takes place throughout the labor second one whichever part comes and meets the resistance of the pelvic floor will rotate forward will rotate forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis whichever part comes and meets the resistance of the pelvic floor here pelvic floor is there it is meeting the resistance of the pelvic floor it will rotate forward rotating forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis and third principle is whichever part emerges out of the symphysis pubis will pivot around the pubic bone it will pivot around the pubic bone so these, these are the three principles first one descent takes place throughout the labor second one whichever part comes and meets the resistance of the pelvic flow will rotate forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis and the third one whichever part emerges out of the pubic bone will pivot around the symphysis pubis. So now see the cardinal movements of the mechanism of 
left occipital anterior. In that first one is engagement. It is said to have occurred when the widest presenting transverse diameter. Already we have seen the diameters of the fetal skull. Widest transverse diameter has passed through the brim of the pelvis. This is the brim of the pelvis. This transverse diameter has passed through the brim of the pelvis. The engaging anterior posterior diameter of the head is suboccipital bracmatic 9.5 cm and if it is slightly deflexed it is suboccipital frontal 10 cm and the engaging widest transverse diameter is biparietal diameter that is 9.5 cm. So the first cardinal movement is engagement. Next one is engagement. Next one is descent. Descent takes place throughout the labor. It is a continuous movement throughout the process of the delivery. However, it becomes more rapid in the second stage of labor. It is caused by the that is it is coming downward. It is engaged and it is coming downward. And next one is flexion. Due to flexion, in this, when, when the head is meeting the resistance of the pelvic flow in the engagement, due to the resistance, the head will flexed, get flexed. So, the suboccipital frontal diameter, if the presenting longitudinal diameter is suboccipital frontal, suboccipital frontal 10 cm, during flexion, see this is a flexion, it will become suboccipital bracmatic 9.5 cm. And next one is engagement descent flexion then next one is internal rotation of the head the head rotate one by eighth of the circle and it comes under the symphysis pubis see in the initial during the engagement we know that the occiput is pointing towards the right left iliopectinal eminence and the sagittal suture is in the left right oblique diameter of the pelvis occiput is pointing towards the left iliopectinal eminence and the sagittal suture is in the right oblique diameter of the pelvis. In the internal rotation what will happen means the head will rotate forward as per the second principle it will rotate forward and the occiput will, will be pointing towards the symphysis pubis and the sagittal suture will come to the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis. Sagittal suture will come to the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis. And next one is crowning. That is the combined effect of the descent and the internal rotation bring the presenting diameter to the rotation to the plane of the pelvic outlet with the occiput lying under the pubic arch and the sinciput at the lower border of the sacrum or coccyx. When the widest diameter of the fetal head is distended the vulva it is said to have crowned see now it is crowned the widest diameter has passed after that the head will not recede back like this the occiput will remain under the subpubic arch and next is restitution as per the third principle now it is under the symphysis pubis as per the third principle whichever part come comes under the symphysis emerges out of the pubic bone will pivot around the pubic bone. So, it will just get rotated towards the left side of the mother or towards the left maternal thigh. So, the twist that has occurred during the internal rotation of the head will be corrected by this restitution. Next is internal rotation. See by this time now the head is here. Now this time the shoulder will come to the pelvic flow and it will start to meet, get, meet the resistance of the pelvic flow. And as per the second principle whichever part is meeting the resistance of the pelvic flow will rotate forward until it comes under the symphysis pubis. And the shoulder is entering in the left oblique diameter of the pelvis and this will rotate forward 1 by 8th of the circle and it will come to the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis. So, the uh, by acromion diameter will be in the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvis. At the same time external rotation of the head also will occur during the internal rotation of the shoulder same time external rotation of the head also will occur. So, the face will be pointing towards the right thigh 
and the occiput will be put towards the left thigh. And next is delivery of the shoulder. The widest diameter of the shoulder past the pelvic brim that is the biacromian diameter and the anterior shoulder will sweep the perineum and the posterior shoulder will deliver bilateral flexion and the complete body will deliver through the lateral flexion and the body will be delivered towards mother's abdomen. So that is all about the mechanism of left occipito anterior position.